Now there's a debate. There's a debate going on. The deinvestment of higher education was occurring across the country. On one side, you have Bobby Jindal and a man named Grover Norquist. I offer people a taxpayer protection pledge. He came up with an idea to persuade politicians to sign a pledge that said that they would never vote to raise taxes. I will not raise your taxes. Grover Norquist is a grifter. He starved the government by reducing tax revenue. They're designing the system to fail. You make sure that a public institution cannot perform its duties, and then you blame it for failing to live up to its goals and performing its duties. I think we all I agree now college costs too much, delivers too little, and it has to change. Before any of your, our young people take out student loans, that school has to tell you how much you can expect to make. We need people who come to the federal government and ask for money to pursue something that has some demand in the economy. These reformers decided that universities were the problem. And they say that education is a commodity. They've started a fervent political campaign under this mistaken guise that students are consumers rather than students and future citizens. You can commoditize it, you can charge for it. It's just another thing out there. It's a barrel of oil, it's an ounce of gold, it's a stock. It's anything. The existing system creates barriers to entry that limit competition. There's $150 billion in federal financial aid that is on the line. That's created a very toxic ideology. The fallout continues tonight over the ousting of University of Virginia President Teresa Sullivan. Tom Ross is the president of the UNC system. He was shoved out by the UNC Board of Governors. Mike McKinney, who was the chancellor of the Texas A&M system at the time, was pushed out. Some politicians became at odds when Powers refused to implement a series of reforms that make the university more like a business. The governor is calling his plan Act 10 for the UW and says he believes they can handle the $300 million cut he's proposed. Because of our reforms today, there is no seniority or tenure in our state. For them, criticizing the government is political. That definition of political means, therefore, it can't be uttered by a university professor. Then think of the vision of the First Amendment, free speech, and academic freedom that's left. Professors cannot criticize the government. Any institution hates to admit that it has a problem. They all want to say, look, we're just like we were before, everything is fine, and that would be a lot because we have been hurt. If you want your son or daughter to get a great education, you better be looking at MIT or Stanford or one of the great private institutions. And it's a tragedy, really.